Alright, hey folks. So today I'm going to be playing Slay the Spire, uh, which is a sort of roguelike dungeon delving card game. If you're not familiar with the game, it's a lot of fun. I suggest picking it up. I've been having a lot of fun playing it. Um, obviously it's been a long time since I've recorded anything, but I've been playing this game a lot, and I actually couldn't find a ton of videos of people playing on the highest difficulty setting, uh, which is what I'm about to do. So I thought, hey, why not do a video? Um, this game just added difficulty settings, which as you can see here, the game's still in early access, uh, are experimental. So uh, what the difficulty settings do, you have to beat each one in order, and these difficulties are additive, and they make basically every enemy does more damage, uh, there are more elites during your run, uh, you heal less, you start damaged, although you only start with 10% damage, so it's not so bad. Um, every enemy has more health, which is actually really brutal, and I haven't played on this setting yet, but I assume Parasite means you start with a Parasite card in your deck. So, I'm going to be running through with the Silent, which is the class that I have been having a lot of fun with. Uh, really interesting mechanics on this class, and I think you guys will see what I mean when we get into it, if you haven't played the game already. Uh, yeah, and let's just dive right in to... Silent, Slay the Spire, Ascension 10. Talk to the weird whale here. Okay, so what we're going to do is choose an item here. So I can either get a random rare card, which I usually don't like to do, a random common relic, a random rare relic, or a random boss relic. Relics are, are artifacts that uh, affect how you play as you go through. Um, we're just going to do the common relic because I want to have gold to remove, yep, as I thought, there's a parasite in my deck. I want to get rid of this as soon as possible. can also look at the map that we're going through. So we're probably going to be hitting up one of these shops very early to get rid of the parasite. So let's just do random common relic. Alright, bronze scales. Whenever you take damage, deal three damage back. Uh, that's not a great one, but it's not terrible. So, basically, this is... If you've played FTL, this is very similar. Same sort of concept. You choose pods and go through. You'll get events as you go through them. Um, I usually like in the first run to try to hit as many of these elite enemies as possible because they're the ones that drop relics, and relics are what will power you up through the run. I also want to hit as many question marks as possible as a sort of secondary goal, and I want to get a shop in, and I want to avoid as many common enemies as possible when planning the run. Unfortunately, the shops are only on the left side, and the path to the most elites is only on the right side. Uh, what does Parasite do exactly? It's just unplayable. Oh, leave. Uh... So I think I might just do the four question marks and a fire path in the hopes that we get an event that lets us remove a card. Uh, if not, this could be a very short run when the Elite just kills us because we have a bad deck. As with many deck building games, uh, there's sort of two key concepts for building a deck. You want to have your deck be as small as possible and as focused as possible, so everything needs to be... Uh, useful. We're definitely doing this fight first. I'll decide the the rest later. Um, just gonna. This is a great shuffle for us. We got rid of the parasite on the first uh, shuffle through, and we were able to do strike, 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 neutralize on this cultist while he's not doing anything. So I want my deck to be as small as possible and as focused as possible, meaning I need to have a plan going into deck building. I've found that with this class, there's basically two decks that work, so we're going to be trying to either build a poison deck or a shiv deck. Uh, and if you're not, again, if you haven't played the game, you'll see what I mean as we go through. Uh, this is a really clean first fight. Didn't take any damage, and the cultist just goes down very quickly. Okay, so basically I get to choose a card to add to my deck. Uh, I will often be skipping cards if there's nothing good for us here. Um, this is a pretty marginal card. There's nothing that's like really important to have here, but I do like having a backflip in the deck 
uh, just lets us cycle through our deck and push. So now we have a decision to make. Do I go for the very safe route, go for the shop, and remove the Parasite as soon as possible? It means that I have to hit two basic fights instead of two question marks, and miss out on one elite over the course of the run. Um, you know what, I don't think it's worth it on the first floor to have to fight enemies <laughs> if you can avoid it, except for elites. So I'm just going to run through here. There's a decent number of events that let you remove a card, such as this one. <laughs> we are so lucky. Uh, and that will just immediately get rid of that Parasite. So I do take three max HP loss because of how Parasite works. When you remove it, you lose three HP because you're like pulling the worm out of your brain or whatever. Uh, okay, we get some nice potions. I'm going to take the Strength and the Dex potion. Run through here. Alright, another cultist fight. Or, sorry, no, this is a slaver. This guy is slightly tougher than the cultist, but still shouldn't be a big problem we get to do. Uh, I'm going to try not to take a damage in this fight, so I will do defend, defend, rather than strike, strike. Um, especially because with the thorns relic that we got from the whale, uh, we kill this guy a little faster than we would otherwise. Thorn's Relic is pretty helpful in the early game. It's just going to let us get through this kind of much more cleanly. Backflip to draw some cards. And I'm going to defend, strike. The early fights are just all about conserving your health. It doesn't matter how long it takes to beat them or anything. We just need to use our like bad starting cards as best as possible to get us out of the early section. Just finish off this slaver. Uh, hopefully we draw strike strike and can just get on with our lives. Alright, perfect. Actually, even just strike there would have won on that turn. Uh, okay, so nice. We got a free draw card. This card is amazing. Um, it's just a zero mana draw card card, which lets us cycle through our deck more quickly, which is exactly what we're looking for. So far, this run is going pretty well. I'd like to hit, like, a treasure or something, but um, failing that. So we could either pay here. We have an option to pay 35 gold to remove, to heal 16. We're only hurt for four, though. Or pay 50 to remove a card, which is an excellent deal. At a merchant, it costs 75. And one of our goals for the first floor is to get as many of these, of these strikes out of our deck as possible. One marker that I don't have yet is I usually like to have a poison card or some offensive card that will let me deal with elites more easily uh, before I fight my first elite, because often the starting set of cards is not enough to beat the elites when on the higher difficulty settings. Uh, here we're going to upgrade a card, and the card we're going to upgrade is Neutralize. I really like having Neutralize upgraded because having a free apply weak for two turns uh, really lets us take a lot less damage in fights, especially against the more dangerous elites. And get through this fight. What I'd really like to get is a Noxious Fumes or an Infinite Blades or something along those lines that will allow us to start building out our deck and see sort of which direction our deck is going from here. Uh, I don't... I wish I had Survivor because then I could do Double Strike, but... We'll just backflip. I actually probably shouldn't have backflipped there because I've now triggered a shuffle when I didn't need to. Um, but this guy is weakened for two turns, so he's dealing 25% less damage with all of his attacks. This jaw worm. Uh, we're just going to keep trying to not uh, lose this fight. Um, and I actually should have drawn there, now that I think about it, because I want to trigger, I wanted to find uh, Neutralize, and get that in, in this shuffle. Basically, every time you go through all of your cards, your deck reshuffles. 
Here we found neutralize. This guy is going to get stronger over time if we don't kill him relatively quickly. Uh, here, I'm just going to do defend, defend, defend to avoid taking any damage. And hope to draw into two strikes on my next hand to be able to finish the fight. Perfect. Alright, so none of our fights have we taken damage yet. And we'll see what cards we get. Uh, oh, this is perfect. Okay, so Noxious Fumes is one of the important card, the most important card, actually, for the Poison deck. Uh, so that's what we're going to be aiming for. I'm going to be picking this up, and now our deck looks like this, with uh, Backflip, Escape Plan, Upgraded Neutralize, and Noxious Fumes, and one Strike, and the starting Parasite removed. And uh, we're in great shape going into this chain of elites that we intend to battle. This is where the run could easily end if we get um, this guy. So against this guy, I'm going to start with Noxious Fumes, and I also am going to use this Strength Potion right away. Strength makes all my attacks do two more damage, because the deal with this guy is he will have a the Gremlin Knob. He's going to have a power that whenever I play a skill, which includes Defend... Uh, and escape plan, he is going to get two strength stronger. So my defenses are basically worthless against this guy, and he always in the early game does a ton of damage to you. So I'm also going to drink this health regeneration potion. Should have done that last turn. May not get full value out of this potion. Uh, and I'm just not going to block on his first attack. We'll take 12. We're probably going to start blocking this turn in the hopes that we can avoid taking damage as much as possible. Here we're doing strike, strike, and I'll use survivor. It's the most block. He gets two strength, so we're only taking five this turn. Yeah, really should have used that regeneration potion a turn earlier. Just making sure that we get neutralized on every shuffle so that he's uh, he stays weak. Strike, strike. And here I will do defend. He gets two more strength, but we're planning to kill him next turn anyways. <laughs> we are probably not killing him this turn. Uh, is my deck all strikes? I could miss on this backflip, but I'm going to go for it anyways. Okay, perfect. We only needed to hit one of these, because if we do 8 damage to him, he'll be at 1 and die to the poison. But we hit both. Kill him. Uh, I actually shouldn't have killed him there, because I gave up 3 health. So I actually lost 6 health by misusing that potion this fight. Uh, Pen Nib is pretty bad for the poison version of this deck, but what can you do? Uh, a lot of people really stand by Catalyst for the poison deck. I am not actually a huge fan of Catalyst. I think that it's sort of a a win more card in card gaming terms. Uh, Thousand Cuts is much better for the Shiv version of the deck, and Calculated Gamble is okay, but again, it's not like my favorite card because it, it does decrease the total number of cards you have to work with. Um, here I'm going to, I think, take a thousand cuts because it's still possible that we have to transition to the Shiv version of the deck if we don't get the drops that we want. That could be a mistake and it's possible I'm supposed to skip there. Okay, 30 gold, 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms. And we get to fight our second elite. This is good, I really like fighting these guys. This is the, uh, the easiest elite fight that you can get on the first floor. These guys uh, will, every turn, they will daze you or zap you with a laser. So I am going to, I'm going to try to kill one of the ones that are on, uh, they'll, they'll alternate turns. So these two are going to daze and then next turn both of them will attack. So I'm going to try to kill one of these ones so that there's fewer turns of two enemies attacking at once. We can pretty much always get nine block, but getting consistently getting to 18 block can be very difficult. If I have to, I'll use my dexterity potion and we'll see if that helps. So, 
So here, uh, yeah, I'm going to use my dex potion because otherwise we're taking a ton of damage this turn. And I hope we draw into... Nice, that was the perfect draw. I'm not going to get to play a thousand cuts this turn because I want to get out uh, Survivor and Defend and also this Noxious Fumes. So Noxious Fumes, basically every turn at the start of my turn, I apply two poison to all enemies. Uh, three once I manage to upgrade it. Which is going to... It, it starts out with small damage, but it adds up pretty quickly. And basically all... Once you have that in play, all you have to do is stay alive, and then you will eventually win the fight. Start with uh, card draw. Gonna hit this guy with a strike, and I'll survivor. It's a little unfortunate that I have to discard a dazed with survivor there. Uh, because if you discard a dazed, it goes back into your deck and you can draw it again. And if you leave it in your hand, it disappears. Here, I can do 12, which does not kill this guy before he attacks. So we're actually taking a bunch of damage this turn. Which isn't my favorite thing. But what can you do? If I'd been able to kill this guy, it'd only take two this turn, but as is, we're taking 11, or, yeah, 11. This fight gets harder and harder because your deck gets worse and worse over time as these guys keep dazing you. Next, we'll kill this guy because he's so low. Uh, this one will die to poison, so we don't have to hit it. I'm gonna defend, strike, and check. And the rest of this fight is just going to be about making sure I hit 9 defense every turn while these guys die to the poison and the, uh, the thorns. The bronze scales. So taking only 11 on an elite is pretty good. Usually expect to take about 15 damage per elite that I fight. Uh, this is a uh, this is a fine turn, actually, because this guy will die to the poison before he can shoot me. My pen nib is triggering. Every tenth attack you play deals double damage. Uh, so I, my next attack will deal double damage. I might actually, if I can, try not to attack this turn, but unfortunately I didn't draw two defenses, so I, I have to kill this or I'll take more damage. Just let it die to the poison. I was thinking, these do carry over from fight to fight. So, if I could have kept that, it would let my first attack in the next fight do double damage. Which would have been very nice. Bird-faced urn is, I think, maybe the second or third best relic you can get. Uh, extremely useful for this guy. We always have a lot of powers in our deck. We already have two. Um, and it's going to let us uh, sustain our health pool over the course of... Our push through Ascension 10. This fight is always brutal. We're going to end up taking a decent amount of damage on the first turn. Probably 10 on the first turn. Because uh, we need to get our Noxious Fumes set up. And then uh, defend, defend. This Thousand Cuts is, is a dead card right now, but will become more useful later. And I hate these gremlin fights because the, all of them attack at once, and you just can't. You just can't defend fast enough. Uh, these fights are easier in a more aggressive deck that can just kill the gremlins and not take damage from them. So here, I can do strike, strike, and then I will neutralize this one, and then I will strike. No, I can't, I have to hit survivor. So I'll let that guy die before he attacks, and then we block this eight. 
but then this guy will have finished charging up the gremlin wizard and we're gonna take a bunch of damage here so get ready 30 uh, neutralize is in our deck so I'm gonna draw and hope I hit it nice okay so that'll save us a lot of damage hopefully yep minus eight and then uh, it's just defend defend Actually, I could have hit that guy with a strike, and it would have saved me the same amount as defending. Okay, so we took, what, like, 30 damage this fight? I haven't really been paying attention, but... That's what happens when you get the gremlins. Luckily, we do have the bird-faced urn, which will allow us to... Heal some of that back up, and I think Thousand Cuts is... Okay, it, it, it missed the shuffle, but we can play it at least before ending the fight, and we get two health back. So I've made a couple mistakes so far this run. Um, the big one was with that regeneration potion. Uh, here, we just want Blur, because the whole point of this deck is... So gain five block, block is not removed at the start of your next turn. This will let us tank up on turns when the enemy is not doing anything. The whole point of this deck is just to outlast whatever the enemy is doing. Unfortunately, I think because we took so much damage on that gremlin fight, I'm going to have to rest at this campsite. I usually like upgrading cards at campsites whenever possible, but... 19 health is too low for my comfort. And we do have an elite to fight before the boss. Okay, we ran into a merchant, which is not bad for us. So let's see. I could get Caltrops and go up to six uh, uh, thorns by playing that as a power. It's also a power, which is very nice for us with our bird-faced urn. I could also buy one of these relics. It's a pity I can't afford the ice cream. Ice cream is one of the better, uh, maybe the best relic that you can get at a shop. Uh, energy is conserved between turns, lets you really build up for big turns. Uh, all of these cards are garbage, except maybe Flying Knee. I don't hate having one of these, it just again lets you build up for bigger turns, but I think we're going to try to keep our deck really small. So I think, do I want Art of War? I, Art of War is very powerful, because just extra mana is extremely valuable in this game. The other option is to remove a strike and add a Caltrops, which gives us a, a third power for our urn. So six healing a fight instead of uh, just four, as well as getting a strike out of our deck. Just have an elite and then a campfire and then the boss to fight on this floor. I think I'm going to go with... Whew, this is actually a really tough decision. I, I, if it was a slightly worse relic, I wouldn't uh, want it. But I think, in this case, getting the extra power and the, the strike out of our deck is just too valuable. Uh, like I said, um, you really do want to keep your deck small uh, when you're playing a deck building game. And because we have the urn, that Caltrops is worth two health every fight, basically. Which is just so good. Alright, uh, this fight... The key to this fight is to just not do anything, because this guy's asleep. The Lagavulin. So I'm just going to pass on my first turn. I guess I'll, I'll draw with this gate plan, because might as well. As long as I don't break his armor, he won't wake up for the first two turns, and then on the third turn he'll wake up. But the, what we want to do is get all of our powers set up before we have to start fighting him. And then I'll just end turn. And then on this next turn, he's going to start looking. Uh, so actually, I don't even have to hit him yet. So I'm going to go with blur, escape plan, defend. You can see my thousand cuts is starting to cut him, but as long as it doesn't 
break his thing. So we just tanked up on this turn. He's going to wake up and get mad. Because we poisoned him. But because we put so much, we got so much armor last turn, we can actually not have to spend this turn defending. Nice, got neutralized, which is what I was hoping for. And we can do strike, strike. Hopefully let the poison from our thousand cut, or our noxious fumes start to stack up. So you can see like I have so many uh, powers going because we spent all those turns that he was asleep setting up, which is just a really nice way to handle these fights. Drew a, a blur. I'm gonna hit him with a strike. Because we have double damage on that strike from our pen nib. And then I will do defend, defend. Take two here, but that's not so bad. You want to kill this guy pretty quickly because he will, uh, this ability that he's about to use is going to decrease our strength and dexterity, which means that we are gonna be doing one less damage for, with every attack and getting one less armor from every defense. Just looking for more strikes here, didn't find them. But I'll play a defend anyways, because it, it does a thousand cuts to him. He is weakened, so it's not so bad right now. We're just going to keep trying to survive. Blur, defend, survivor. This is a pretty simple fight. You just uh, set up, let him die to poison, and this will be a pretty common theme throughout the rest of the run, hopefully. Just let these guys kill themselves on our armor. And now I can just do pen strike, strike, strike. So we only took two damage on the Legavalin, which is a pretty good Legavalin fight. This deck is actually going really well so far. We've gotten basically perfect luck. Tingsha, whenever you discard a card during your turn, deal three damage to a random enemy for each card discarded. Uh, that probably won't come up with this deck, but we'll see. I could take Calculated Gamble to do a bunch of damage with it, because... Uh, I would discard my whole hand and do like 15 damage or something. Um, I don't hate that idea and I would probably take the gamble if there wasn't an escape plan here, but since there's an escape plan here, you should always take escape plan. It's just free value. Here, we have 43 health, so I don't think I need to rest before fighting the boss, so I'm gonna go smith. Uh, and what I want to do is upgrade my noxious fumes, that'll give us a much, much faster kill on most of these bosses. Um, I, I really like having at least one Noxious Fumes plus when you're doing the poison build. And let's go fight us a boss. Alright, we got the Slime Boss. Uh, the Slime Boss is one of the tougher ones for this deck, unfortunately, because his whole deal is he's going to do on the third turn a giant attack. Um... And if you're an aggressive deck, you can deal 75 damage to him and make him split into two, which will interrupt his attack uh, by the third turn. But this deck cannot do 75 damage in <laughs> two turns. So it's going to be a little bit tougher than that. I actually should have played a thousand cuts first because I intended to do that. So miss one damage. And then I'm going to Survivor here. Also de dealing three, because I discarded a card to that Tingsha. So, but yeah, missed one damage on the slime boss. You can see he's... Oh gosh, we, we drew real bad here. Uh, no damage on the turn that he's not doing anything. Play them all, because 1,000 cuts, three damage. We're going to take uh, the one big hit here. He's not even neutralized this turn, so it, this is going to hurt. At least drew escape plan into escape plan. and But yeah, we, we also got really bad luck, because last turn we drew all four defends that were remaining in the deck. Uh, so we missed our all of our armor also. We don't even get to armor up this turn. Uh, neutralize was at the top, so we we don't get to weaken him, which would be a big deal. 
Anyways, this is gonna hurt. We're gonna take 30 this turn. Do get to get Noxious Fumes set up though, and at least we get a small heal after this fight. Uh, start as always with escape plan. And you get this Caltrop set up. Regain two health there. Backflip and uh, just defend for now. Actually, it's possible I'm supposed to strike here because I can't take another big hit. And yeah, we're getting another bad shuffle where we can't do damage. At least he will be weakened for this one this time. If I draw a triple strike, do I stop him? No, not even with triple strike. At least he's weakened though, so we won't die outright, but we're going to go down to one. Definitely could have fought this fight better, I think. Oh uh, yeah, with triple strike I could have... Oh, I could have interrupted him. I'm just like not even paying attention. I forgot he had poison on him. I could have just done double strike and that would interrupt him. Okay, gotta tighten this play up. This is ridiculous. Uh, let's draw a bunch of cards. No, I'm gonna use this with my double damage. The uh, the split slimes are gonna keep his health after he splits, so we want to do as much damage to him as possible. Uh, so the lesson from this fight so far is don't play like me. We only have one option this turn, which is defend, defend, defend. Since I'm at, at one health and don't have any... Can't spare any damage right now. And uh, just let this... Yeah, we're dead, right? So this guy's going to split no matter what. Wait, are we dead? This guy's going to split because I only have to get him to 21. This guy will not split. Uh, wait, I can sp make him split, right? He's taking 5 down to 22. Okay, we're actually not dead. Because both of these guys are going to get interrupted when they take poison damage. And they'll split into more slimes. This is what I should have done with the big guy last turn. So, currently not dead, hanging on by the skin of our teeth. The old one health. We'll hit this guy with a neutralize, try to take him out this turn. Uh, which I can, because I do one strike. And he's gone. I already have eight block. So let's backflip first, try to draw some cards, and then I will hit this guy with a strike, which will finish him off in two turns. Actually, is that even good? Do I need to do that, or can I just hit one of the other ones? No, I should hit this guy. Oh no, I forgot I had thorns. Did not need to hit that guy. At this point, this is all pretty academic, though. <laughs> we already made our big mistake for this fight. Yeah, he was going to kill himself on my six damage thorns. Um, but... Okay, well... I can't even defend, defend, defend to stop myself from dying, but I can strike this guy and have him die to poison. And then I'll just do defend, defend to do some damage to that guy. Okay, uh, well the deck is real good and is carrying us through this first boss despite my mistakes, but that does go to show that you can, even on Ascension 10, there's room for some errors. Um, but we are not super well set up now, like I should have about 40 health going into this next floor rather than the 
uh, one that we have. Do get 100 gold, then we get to add a rare card to our deck. New Storm of Steel, Phantasmal Killer. On your next turn, your attack damage is doubled, or Alchemize. Obtain a random potion, Exhaust. Um, I don't... I'm not a big fan of Alchemize. I know... I've seen people use it in their runs, but I think that the potions are, are pretty weak on the whole. Uh, and having a card in your deck that doesn't really do anything is, is really painful. So we're going to just skip this set of cards and then see what's in the box. Every boss has a boss relic. Card reward screens choose from four cards instead of three. Why is this a boss relic? This is the most garbage relic. Like, this is this is worse than anything I already have, the question card. Uh, draw two additional cards each turn, start each combat confused. This card is good if you have a lot of expensive, or Relic is good if you have a lot of expensive cards in your deck, but we've actually picked up mostly zero mana uh, escape plans and stuff. And Cursed Key, gain one mana at the start of each turn. Whenever you open a non-boss chest, obtain a curse. This is a very easy pick because um, extra mana each turn is ludicrously powerful in this game. So this is actually a great pickup. And that is the first floor. I think I'm going to cut the video here, so thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying it, and I will bring you the second floor uh, in a minute. And as always, you know, whatever, comment and all that sort of YouTube stuff, and I will catch you guys next time. Cheers. GG.